We've all been there, especially at the beginning of our wine journeys, where wine terms get thrown around and it sounds a bit like alien speak, but fear not, because we are going to have a look at some of the most common ones and what they mean. Hi there, I'm Jacqueline Favero, where we go around the world searching out wild and scarce, hard to find wines to bring to our US customers and businesses across the country. We know how complicated wine can seem, and it's easy to feel overwhelmed, like when someone engages with you at a social gathering and they casually bust out terms like smooth, body, finish, as they just swirl their glass. But with a little knowledge, you can confidently understand the lingo and even come to express your own opinions on wine with confidence. And this video today is only part one of that journey, so be sure to subscribe here on YouTube and to our newsletter on verovino.com, I'll link below, to not miss out when part two drops. In this first video, we're going to focus on words that are surrounding a key concept of balance and harmony. Be sure to stay tuned to the end because we are going to define those two words. But for now, let's get started. Acidity. This is the sharp characteristic that we find in wine that is often described as fresh or crisp. It's caused by acids such as malic or tartaric acid, and it's often expressed on a scale from low to high. The most recognizable feature of acidity is the immediate salivation that you will feel when swallowing or swirling the wine in your mouth. The higher the acidity, the more the salivation. Both red and white wines can exhibit acidity, but some grape varieties naturally produce more acidic wines than others. For example, look for wines that are high in acidity like Riesling or Barbera. Dry. Now, for the next three words, we have what I like to call our sweetness scale. And this is only for still wines, not sparkling. Sparkling wines have their own scale that we've talked about in previous videos if you want to check that out after this one. Our first term up on the sweetness scale is dry, and it refers to the absence of sugar or sweetness in the wine. Typically, a dry wine has no noticeable sweetness because all of the sugars have been completely fermented into alcohol. This concept does not refer to the wine literally feeling drying on the palate. That's a sensation that we expect from tannins, which we will define in a minute. But dry simply means there is no discernible sweetness or sugars. Off dry and residual sugar. All right, we've got a double whammy here, two words, but they are linked. Off dry is our halfway point on the sweet scale. Not too sweet and not too dry. But why is that? Well, off dry wines have a small amount of residual sugar. These are sugars that are left over when fermentation has stopped either naturally or forcibly by the winemaker. And this gives the wine an ever so slight sweet flavor. There are lots of good off dry wines that you can try from the Czech Republic that we really love. Sweetness. And finally, the namesake of our scale, sweetness. At the other end of the spectrum from dry, a wine can be described as sweet when there is a noticeable and considerable sugar content left over after fermentation has stopped. Some wines can even go as high as 200 grams per liter of sugar, and this gives the wine a sweet flavor. For these wines, it's important that the winemaker has a good dose of acidity present for reasons that we're going to find out at the end of the video, so stick around. Some good sweet wines to try are like Pasitos from Italy. Tannins. Tannins are a compound derived from the grape skins and seeds. They are found primarily in red wines because of the extended maceration periods on the skins that goes on during the winemaking process. Tannins present as a tactile, drying, sandy, rough sensation in the mouth. You can feel them sometimes more on the palate, the roof of your mouth, on your cheeks, your gums, your tongue. Depending on the wine, the tannins will present differently within the tasting. And again, it's worth noting the dry sensation that people often associate with tannins does not relate to the term used in the sweetness scale. Different grape varieties will naturally produce varying levels of tannins, like the Nebbiolo from Piedmont, which is famously high in tannins. Interestingly, this tannic sensation will soften with age or extended oak contact, which is one reason why tannic grapes like Nebbiolo will make a great age-worthy wine like Barolo. Sapidity. Sapidity is often associated with minerality. It can sometimes be confused for acidity as sapidity presents with lots of saliva production, just like acidity. 
but we've got a twist here. With acidity, you're gonna feel it on the sides of your mouth and there's a tart puckering sensation. Where sapidity, the salivation will hit later and be more of a broad sensation within the mouth. When it's very noticeable or present, it will feel like saline or salty flavors. Smooth. A smooth wine can have a soft, velvety texture on the palate. This sensation is enhanced by the glycerin content of the wine, correlating to the alcohol content. While not really a taste, smoothness is instead a tactile sensation, a pleasant feeling that makes a wine seem silky and luxurious. There aren't any spikes of acidity or tannins in a wine that's smooth, and it feels round and soft in the mouth. Finish or persistence. The finish of a wine is basically how long do the flavors last on your palate? A long finished wine will last 10, 15 seconds and even longer. Short finished wines will be gone before you have a chance to think about the flavors. This ties into the persistence. The longer the finish, the more persistent a wine is. So ask yourself, after swallowing or spitting out the wine, how many seconds can you still taste the flavor of it? Body. Body is a tactile sensation on the palate that is determined by sensations like sweetness, acidity, tannins, and alcohol. And it's usually qualified by words like full or light. Wines with higher levels of these elements, especially when they work together well, are considered to have a fuller body. A full-bodied wine is often described as having a lot going on due to the way it fills your mouth. Smoothness also helps a lot in giving that sensation of a full-bodied wine. Balance. And now we come to balance, an important consideration in wine tasting that refers to the relationships between various characteristics and elements present in the wine glass. It becomes easier to think about balance when we consider previously mentioned characteristics as either hard or soft. Hard meaning tannin, sapidity, acidity, or soft like sweetness and smoothness. A balanced wine will have hard and soft elements in optimal proportions, creating a pleasant and enjoyable experience as the sensations play off of each other. For example, a wine with hard high acidity can be balanced by retaining some soft residual sugars and sweetness. In contrast, an unbalanced wine with maybe no hard acidity and lots of sweetness or lots of acidity and no sweetness may become unpleasant or tiring to consume after a while as your palate gets tired, whether that be of the hard or the soft sensations. Harmonious. A harmonious wine is a rare and exceptional breed. To be considered harmonious, a wine must be balanced, have a nice finish, but also be complex and intense. When all four of these characteristics are present, it creates a unique and captivating tasting experience that encourages the drinker to return for more sips to explore every little corner and aspect of the wine. Some sommeliers may even use harmony as a quality indicator, associating it with a high point value or reserving the term for only the finest and highest quality wines. If you are interested in learning more, head over to verovino.com to check out the blog article that I've linked below. There'll be more information about wine tasting and wine lingo, as well as real world wine suggestions that you can purchase from the Vero shop to experience each term and really learn them. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned something. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe to be notified when part two of this wine lingo series drops. I'll see you in the next video, which in the meantime, until part two drops, could be this one here. Bye.